Yes. Is this a recording? Hello, my friends. Here's Bayano with Bayano Reno. In this video, just gonna show you guys how to do a patch sanding and uh, throw in some prime and paint. So here, guys, we have all the stuff covered. For for a small pot like this is good enough. We guy try to minimize the dust, and uh, we're just gonna go from there. And uh, this will take a few minutes the sanding. We just use a utility poly, very thin stuff. Like we use it once, and then we just grab it and just throw away, nice and easy. And, uh, and the floor here, we just have a drop sheet and um, all what's about we need a mask because uh, dust and uh, we done once we done sand we're just gonna throw in some primer and we go from there nice and easy all we need we need a good light and what we're gonna send just very much the board of the patch and the inside we're not gonna send a lot just to remove the ridge and we're good to go. Let's do it. We have here a pole sander. It's an old sander but it's good enough for this part. This is a... I'm just gonna use a 2 to end sandpaper. And we have a sandy sponge. This side is a little bit rough. This one is smooth. They say trim text. Yes, guys, with the post sand is very good. I mean, like uh, the pressure that you apply depends on the dry oil compound that you use. If you use uh, something that is harder, like concrete fill or fast set, you need really need to put pressure on it because it's hard. But if you use the finish mud, like uh, the best one to do the sand very nice is the you look for the a box that have a white and green on it that one is the lighter one and then anything above that just gonna get harder and harder so is what it is the pressure is not a real uh, it's not a set pressure it's just the the material that you use it's the same thing as wood you just have to send it and check it and the sandpaper you use, if you're gonna if you're gonna do for the first coat, you just see use a rough sander like a hundred hundred grit is good enough to do the first coat of mud, and then you reload it. You use a something like a hundred and eighty grit to chew to end. I say it's good enough. Well, the the way to hold the post sand, I just uh, if you have a horizontal join, just a bevel join. You just send it with the joint, that way uh, you have it straight. Because if you just go this way with the horizontal joint, you're going to leave uh, holes and gaps. So if you go this way, you just do it straight. For the ceiling, like in this case here, we're just doing the patch. We're just going to go, first I'm going to go over close to the board where the new mud meet the old one that one i have to send real good and the rest i just gonna make it remove the reed that is there and make it smooth because i put the mud there so i know it's not a whole other thing to do and uh, the part that uh, somebody come and take a look and see it is where the new mud meet the old one and then that part is where you have to do your extra job check with the light a sponge because sometimes it's just have a few things behind and uh, if you do it for the first time second time you still have chance to if you're not happy with it you just can put a little bit more mud sand later or you can apply the primer and then you check it again do some touch up
like you guys can see, I just care more on the board. You guys can see, you know, not even seen it where the mud went. So it's uh, this is what it is about. And I'm just gonna do a little check with the sponge, and uh, we go from there. Without the light, you don't see where is the place need to send. But once you have the light, you see all the defects and a uh, good way to to go without a light would be impossible to do a, a good job yes guys so I'm just gonna keep going here Gotta do a little bit clean up the dust on the ceiling that way you can just roll some paint on it. Go from there because if you leave the dust sometimes it just become very rough. All the time you're doing the paint is just wipe up the walls with some soft cloth or a soft broom. Maybe something like this would work soft enough to move the dust. In this case I'm just gonna use this cloth my soft my shirt and go from there. I'm gonna show you guys. Well, this is here pretty much nothing too crazy. I'm just gonna go not too hard, just uh, clean all the dust. You guys can see dust is coming off. Once the dust is off, we're just gonna roll on some paint and go from there. I have my paint here ready to go. I'm not even gonna put a handle on this roll, I'm gonna step up there and get it done. This case here, just gonna go have the paint there nice on the roll, it's not drip, nothing. I'm not gonna go too crazy on it because I just don't want to make mess on the walls, so I'm just gonna go slow, that way I don't have to cover the walls. Yes, my friend, patch is complete, paint is up, I just need to wait it to dry and uh, we go from there, clean up the mess. If you have any question about the sand, about whatever we done here today, just uh, ask your question, write your comment. Yes, uh, this patch, we, we had the dry or repair patch on the, other, on the other video, the previous video, so... If you want some reference about it, and else we have a, a video on the same part that we have a water leak, we had to cut it and uh, find the problem where the water was leaking from. We will link it, and uh, you just click on the link below, it take you right to the video. And uh, see you guys next time. Know what we gotta do here? It's just. Uh, Clean up all this mess, put the tools together, and move on to the next job. I love you guys. See you on the next video. Thank you.